So the Beat Wiggle component of Beat Edit is one of the most powerful features you have in Beat Edit to animate either to entire layers or just sliders of your project and this works really with any slider and to just give you some idea what you can do with it here is a little part of from our promo video and as you can see it's a particle system which we created with uh, trap code particular in this case and the particles are moving in a pretty fancy way with the beat and how this is done in this example is we animated the wind speed of the particular particle system and also some other parameters in this case here like here we also overlaid at this end part where it gets really crazy yeah these deformations are actually not particular itself but here on top of this i have put a cc flow motion effect some kind of distortion effect that also has some keyframes here on these distortion properties to create these fancy deformations of everything in sync with the beat so how is this working? Let's first take a look at Beat at its user interface itself for the Beat Wiggle, and then we recreate something similar than this example here from scratch. So what we first do, of course, we load our music. We already have done this. And then if you play back, you can see if you set this here to slider, a preview of how this slider would animate. And you have lots of presets to get started with. So for example, you could have a preset where you say one every four beats should be higher. And you can say, for example, I just want random jumps. Now you can see it jumps randomly from one part of the slider value range to another one at each beat. Or you can say you want to go do steps ping pong, which means it moves along the slider until it reaches the top. Then it goes back again until it reaches the bottom and then it goes back up again and so on. These are just presets to get you started. And on top of this, then you have here the full parameters where you can control every little detail. And to understand those, let me first go back to the simple peak preset. The most obvious one to understand is the amount. Yeah. So currently each peak goes up to 100 and we can set the amount to 25, for example, and now the peaks are much less. Now, the next thing you should understand is the fade in duration, hold duration and fade out duration. So how much time does it take to travel to the peak position? This is the fade in duration. Then at this position, it can stay for a while before it returns. This is our hold duration. And then it goes back again. Yeah, so we can say, for example, let's have no fade in at all. Then you can see it abruptly jumps to the final target position instead of traveling there. You could also say fade out is zero, but then you don't see anything until, unless you also make a hold duration. Let's say it should stay there. And you can combine those three however you want. Then also you can for fade in and fade out uh, have an easing. So instead of moving there in a linear fashion, you can expo in and expo out. Then the next very powerful feature is a return. And this means, let's just play it again. If we lower the return to zero, you can see it disappeared. And this is because it's like starting at the beginning and with each peak it increases by 25. So at this point of the music, I'm already way out of this slider range from 0 to 100 that is visualized here. So once you lower the return to something else than 100%, you should also enable clipping, which is here at the very bottom and which is currently set to none. So we can say we want to have a uh, loop clipping and if we play now, you can see that with each move it jumps to the right and if it goes beyond the if it goes beyond the 100, um, it comes back again. Now you can set this clipping range. If you say my slider should have values up to 300, you can see this value here updates and it now travels from zero to 300. You can also have a r return value between zero and 100, but this makes mostly sense if you see the layer actually traveling. So let me add here some kind of fade in again and now let's say we set the return to 50% then this means it is like overshooting and coming back 50% before it continues traveling with the next beat yeah so return of 50% would mean at each beat I move by this amount and then I move back again half of this only and then I stay there and this kind of creates this zigzag like movement that you can see here uh, so these are the basic parameters uh, to understand the amount, how much it travels at each peak, how much it should return again, how, mu how much time to travel into the peak, how much time to stay there, how much time to go back. 
easing for all of this, and the clipping, where you have the loop option. Exclude max and include max are just a subtle difference that if you have a range from 0 to 300, the exclude max would mean if you are exactly at 300, it jumps already back to 0. And if you say include max, it will only do this if you have 300.00001 or something slightly bigger than 300, but the 300 itself is tolerated. And then you have ping pong, which goes back and forth, and you've got clip, which says everything above 300 will simply stay at 300. And again, the range that you want to clip, you control with these two numbers here. Okay, there's way more to this, uh, like you can have more than a single value here and iterate between those values, which is pretty cool. But for this, we've got a separate tutorial about using patterns, and I highly recommend you to watch this one because it's super, super powerful. But for now, let's keep it simple and see how we would use this feature in practice now. So let me apply here the particular plugin to a solid and open the designer to choose a preset. And by default, it looks like this. So now our idea is to do some kind of gust here, essentially, to push the particles at each beat. And so we go in the physics, air section, and here we've got the wind speed. And it's already animating in that direction to create some kind of movement of the particles. And you see these are pretty high values. Yeah. So let me see. Let's just set this to something like 100 and see if this has any effect. So you can see this still moves very slow. It has nothing to do with a real gust or something. First message here find a proper value range that makes sense. Yeah, in this case, let's see how it looks like if we do a value of 1000 in X and Y direction for the wind. Oh yes, this looks kind of like a gust. So this is probably the kind of value range we want. So we go in beat edit, choose our simple peak preset again and say, okay, everything at default, except that my amount should be 1000. And now we select X and Y wind speed. And very important, before we apply it, we set the values back to zero. Because beat edit always acts on top of the original keyframes or the original values. So if we leave this as 1000, then it would put 1000 at each beat on top of the 1000 that we already have. But what we want is nothing by default and then add 1000 at each beat. So let me apply this. And the result we have looks like this. So you can see at each beat our particles now get a nice little push using the wind properties. Now let's say we want to get even more fancy and another thing that can be animated easily in particular are the world transforms. So for example, if we rotate here, our entire coordinate system gets rotated. And why wouldn't we want to rotate at each beat? Of course, rotation is something that should not have values like 1000 changing a rotation of 1000 degrees at each beat. So we rather want to have small changes like maybe 20 at each beat or something like this, 20 degrees. So we apply this and let's see how this is looking like. Yeah, interesting, but maybe we don't want it to go back at each beat, but only in one direction. So we could just lower the return here and also if we want to the value at some randomness. So say like we want to have some randomness and we don't want to return at all. We want to stay there after we rotate it. Now we need to undo before we apply a second round because otherwise it would be applied on top of the first round. Yeah. So we get rid of these keyframes here and can apply again. And this looks like this. So now at each beat we rotate by about 20 degrees or less randomly. Now let's say we want to have on every four speed something different happening. So what we could do is we could select every four speed. So I go on the beat selection section, say select an entire song one beat every four beats evenly. And now I play back and click select on the one. One, two, three, four, click. Two. And now at the one, now I've selected here every four speed and from our one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four pattern, I've selected it such that it's at one the selected beats are. And now at those beats, I want something more intense to happen. At the, the one is always the most important thing. So at the one, I want something more important to happen. One thing we can say is at this peak, on top of what I already have, at the ones we want to have an additional rotation of up to 90 degrees, which is way more. Yeah. So. I just changed this one value and now without deleting the old values, because I want to apply this change on top of the existing one, I now apply my beat wiggle again. And now let's see how this is looking like. Yeah, much cooler. You can see now we've got this 
big change, small change, small change, small change, big change, small change, small change, yeah? So, like every fourth one, the rotation is way more intensive, which uh, makes it look much, much more interesting in sync with the music. So that's essentially what I wanted to show you in this tutorial. So the take home message here is you can animate any kinds of sliders, of course not only of particular, but really anything uh, with speed edit easily by starting to play with the presets, then adjusting the parameters as needed. And remember, you can apply different rounds, one round on top of the other to create more complex results. And since this is possible, make sure if you don't want that and you just try another variation, delete the old keyframes before starting again. Okay, as I quickly mentioned already, you can do much cooler things even by using this plus symbol here and adding more than a single value to each of the properties to create some very, very cool effects. But this for this, I have a separate tutorial. And yeah, I hope this one was already interesting for you. And please, please watch the one about beat patterns too. And yeah, see you there.